Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. This week we're doing a little TIG welding aluminum on the edge. Edge welds on aluminum. The practical application that we're doing toward the end of the video is a little boat prop repair. But before that, a little review on a few weeks ago, we started off doing edge welds and the practical application was a tiller tine and I clamped a copper, a piece of copper to the back side of it to kind of cast the weld metal, give me something to weld up against and it, won't, it didn't stick because it's copper and it's so heat conductive that it just takes the heat right out and doesn't melt. And that worked out just fine as far as building up that tiller tine and grinding it off, reshaping it back to original. Well, the same thing applies to the tip of a boat prop like this that got in a rock or something like that. So that's what we're going to do today. But first, we're going to set up the machine for some thin aluminum and do an edge weld there. Now today I'm using a little TIG inverter. It's an Everlast PowerTIG 210 EXT. It's got all kinds of settings and hidden menus and everything. You can set the start current and all kinds of things. But today, I'm just going to set the basic aluminum settings. The first thing is to set it on 2T, make sure it's on TIG, and I'll go from there. All right, the next thing, we're going to set it on AC with, it, with that button. Got three selections of waveforms, and I'm going to select advanced square. That's, a, that's kind of the most versatile for me, one I like the best and you can get the most out of, it seems like. I'm going to set the AC balance. Now it's adjustable uh, to give you all kinds of cleaning and all the way up to 80% electrode negative. But for this job, I'd rather have a clean puddle than any kind of uh, excessive penetration or anything like that. So I'm going to set it on 15, which is the equivalent of about 65% electrode negative on other machines like a Miller Dynasty. Amperage. I'm just going to set it about 125. I probably won't even need half of that, but I'm going to use the foot pedal to control it. And then I want to set my frequency, the frequency of the alternating current. In order to do that, I've got to get this little frequency light blinking before I can set it. So I press that, get it to blinking, and then I'm going to, anywhere between 100 and 120 is a good setting for frequency for all around, all around work. I kind of want to focus the arc a little bit because I'm using a sharpened electrode. And so I'm going to set it on up to 120 and then lock that in there. And I'm pretty much ready to go. Off to the races. One thing I did do that I didn't show you is I went into the background menu and I set the start current down really low so I could start on the very edge of something thin without nipping it. So now I'm ready to light up on this uh, 1 16th inch thick. That's 063. You can see I've got a sharp tip on the electrode. And the, the, the arc is coming off the tip of that electrode just fine, and I'm feeding a 1 16th wire in there, which is also 1.6 millimeter, for both for the electrode size, the wire size, and the thickness of the metal here. Doesn't take much amperage to do something like that. Now I'm going to step up a little bit thicker here with a little practice uh, mock-up here. I've dished this out with a grinder. This is 1 8 inch thick, 125 thousandths, roughly uh, 3 millimeter or uh, 3.2 millimeter. And again, I'm using the same size electrode, just a little bit more amperage, and I light up nice and easy, let the cleaning action do its work, make sure I get a nice shiny puddle before I get started, and then just progress with a dip and pause and dip and pause, just watching the leading edge of that puddle, using just enough pedal, just enough heat to let that wet in but not dig in. Now in a minute here, I'm going to change angles, and that changes my argon flow, and right there it fuzzes up. See that? And I get that little Venturi effect because I started going backwards. So I stopped and just light up and let that cleaning action do its work and see if it puddles clean. Let it cleaning action build up slow and now I see it. it's going to puddle nice and shiny and clean so I got away without having to stop and, and uh, burr it out and grind it and everything. Now for certain applications you might want to grind that out but for what I'm doing here I think it's a solid uh, well. It might have a pit or two inside there but um, it seemed pretty solid. And actually I ground this off when I was done and I didn't see any pits in it so I just didn't, I'm not going to show you that today. But at this point after running that first bead um, it's going to help a lot to clamp that copper to the back side just like I did on the tiller tine. Also gives me kind of a guide as far as the how much weld to put on there until, until I've got enough. So clamping that on there again it, it helps trap the argon, trap the shielding gas but I still light up and kind of let the cleaning action work, uh, give it a minute to puddle before I start adding rod. And once I see it puddle nice and shiny, then I just start adding rod and dipping and building up and moving it on just like this. Again, I'm way under 100 amps here. This 1 16th electrode 
will probably hold up to 90 to 100 amps without, without it breaking down, but I'm way under that. It's not even hardly rounding the tip. And I'm set at, again, it was negative, six, uh, negative 15 on the AC balance, which is the equivalent of about 65% on something like a Miller Dynasty, uh, Lincoln Invertech V205, or, or other machines that list there as a straight number of percent electrode negative. I did a, another video on AC balance. You can look that up and get a, a, a lot deeper explanation on AC balance if you want. This video, we're strictly talking about edge welds. But here I am, just going back and forth, changing directions, watching that edge of that copper, and it tells me I've just about got enough here. And that will blend off pretty good, except for I've got some little valleys in there. So what I would do here would just come back with a little wash pass or a little adding a little filler while it's still pretty warm and doesn't take much amperage to do. You just kind of come in here and, and add just a little bit, not trying to really uh, penetrate, just flow, just flow metal to uh, take care of any low places there might be because on an application like this oftentimes you're going to blend it off and you want it to look just like it did originally. If you start getting crazy with heat here you can actually wind up cracking it if you penetrate all the way through it so just, just enough to flow some metal in there so that it'll clean up good. Alright that's, that's enough of that. Now good and warmed up for the boat prop. So on a boat prop like this, first of all, you can only do a limited repair. And uh, there's all kinds of issues with, with boat props like balancing and pitch and rake and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just showing you a minor, a minor repair here. I've done it a bunch of times and I know a lot of other people that have done it just to build up the tip of one of them that got into a rock or a stump or something. And the first thing I do is make a little pattern like this just out of a good one so I can kind of get, all, get them all contoured good because I don't have a balancer and I need them really, really close to being the same size. So the first thing is to get the paint off of it. I'm using a 3M Rolock uh, Scotch-Brite type wheel here because I don't want to put deep scratches in there. and I don't want to take off metal. I only want to take off surface corrosion and paint and whatnot. So once I get that nice and clean, it will be ready to weld. A little wipe with acetone wouldn't hurt either. You can, so I can already see a few little small pits in there, probably for, from corrosion and whatnot, but um, not much I can do about that. So, this is what I would do. I would clamp a piece of copper, just like this. It doesn't have to come into perfect contact with it because you kind of want to be able to sink that weld down a little bit anyway. It doesn't have to be a thick, thick piece of copper like this either. Like I hear, it's a piece of eighth inch copper that I uh, have laying around in the box. That works as well. But this is kind of how that works. Just, I extend my electrode out a little bit further than I need to for the sake of filming here, but that's not too far. And again, I light up and let it puddle let the cleaning action work just a little bit before I get crazy with melting it. Make sure it's going to puddle cleanly and nice and shiny wet. And then I just do just like I did on that little mock-up a minute ago. I just watch the front edge of the puddle, use just enough amperage with the foot pedal so that it wets in but doesn't like fingernail and, and cut in real deeply because I just want to build up. Once I, once I melt that first molecule, anything else is just kind of more than enough. So I would like to weld it hot enough to wrap around the bottom edge as well and wrap around the top, but that's, that's all it takes. And on, for something like this, I have found actually going backwards can build up a lot quicker. See how I'm feeding a little rod, rod in there and then, and then pulling it back? You see how tall that bead is building up there? That can actually work to your advantage when you're doing build up on edge work like this. Going backwards on, on TIG welding, I would normally not, not weld in this direction. And you notice I'm feeding it backwards also, which kind of fuses over the little trailer that the, where the wire pulls out sometimes. But I just go forward and back on something like this because uh, the copper is helping pull the heat out so it's not overheating. And I can make two or three passes like this, and then I'll stop and let it cool because I don't want to risk you know, really heating that whole boat prop up because it's got, a, it's got like a rubber thing pressed in with the hub you don't want to mess that up so you do want to let it cool periodically I'm showing you several passes here it's kind of repetitive so if you want to get through this just fast forward it but otherwise just hang with me here and we'll just do several several runs here it's the same same thing over and over and you can probably see here and there a pit or a void Now 
I'm not exactly that accurate sometimes with my filler metal addition here. I always blame it on welding around a camera though. So, <laughs> you know, it is kind of tough to, to, to weld with a camera in your way and having to look around it. But no excuses. I'm keeping an eye kind of on, on the shape of this thing. Every time I stop, I kind of get a, a gauge for how close I am to the little cardboard pattern I cut out. And aluminum grinds so easily that putting a little extra on there is not a big deal. It grinds off so quickly that uh, you know, putting extra on it is not, not a worry. So there you have the side that I washed over a little bit to fill in valleys and everything. Looks kind of looks kind of funny, but it's got plenty on there. A little wax on a uh, like about a 120 grit sanding wheel will keep it from loading up and you can take off a lot of metal quickly with without going through wheels and having them you know load up and not cut anymore and then after I get it down pretty close I put on that 3M Rolock Scotch-Brite pad again you get a nice smooth kind of polished semi polished finish and that is just about done with a little bit a little bit of contouring and that'll be done now the tip of the day 4145 aluminum TIG rod works great for aluminum castings and preventing porosity. Also, check out one rundquist.com for more info on pitch blocks, balancing fixtures and pitch and rake indicators and all that other stuff I mentioned earlier. There's a lot to prop repair. This is just uh, an example of some really simple repair. All right, now we're going to do a little steel and all I did on the machine is just swap it over to DC and that's really all about all I had to do. Um, didn't have to go in and change anything in the background or anything, even though it's it's capable. I've got all kind of settings like that. But for a DC bead on an edge weld, this is an edge joint actually. I'm sandwiching two pieces of forty thousandths steel together, and uh, edge joints like this are not all that common. Um, I've in my in my uh, experience anyway, a lot it's a lot more common to have to build up an edge. But this is an actual joint with two pieces together. And I'm using that uh, same size electrode. I use two. I, I usually usually use two percent lanthanated electrodes just all around for most everything. Uh, so occasionally I pick up a thoriated that I have in the box, but the two percent lanthanated works great for steel and aluminum. And in this case, I'm, I've sharp resharpened it and just running a bead down the edge of that. Uh, just kind of forward and back is kind of a go-to method for me for joints like this. And also, on a, uh, a lot of times on a, on, a, on a joint like that, you wouldn't even use filler metal. You just come along and fuse it together like this, and uh, you can just go straight, steady, or forward and back. Both ways work equally as well. All right, well, that is about it for today for TIG welding edge welds. We'll see you next week. Visit weldingtipsandtricks.com.